A lot of people were very surprised. Where where were you? How I mean, how was it for you when you suddenly saw that you were you were going to be the next president? I was absolutely shocked. I was shocked, but I knew it was going to happen. So I covered myself both ways. I was shocked, <laughs> and I knew it was going to happen. So I, I've covered my bases. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and and obviously now the preparations uh, have to be put in place for you to move into your new house. Well, I'm not moving in. I, I think I've made it very clear. I'm not living in the White House. It's an old place. It's very old. Has old paintings in it, you know what I mean? It's only two stories. I haven't lived in a two-story house since I was five years old. So I'm going to stay in New York. OK. Uh, you had a lot of opposition from people who didn't uh, really believe that, that you could win. Did I you... had no opposition. I don't know what you're talking about. So you had you had no doubt at any point? I that... had no doubt I was going to win. No one was against me. The entire country's with me, I have to tell you. It's tremendous. Um, um, uh, what, what about the uh, the future First Lady? How does she feel about this change of life? Melania, well, we're teaching her as many words as possible. <laughs> we're really going to make it possible for her to communicate with everyone. And uh, and she mm. obviously doesn't want to move into the White House either. She doesn't. She doesn't want to leave New York. She loves, loves, loves New York. And I love New York, not just because my name is on most of the buildings either, mm -hmm. because I love the fantastic city. You know, the, have you been to D.C.? Horrible yeah, place. Horrible oh, place. Is, uh, I hate it. I hate it. It's very humid. Very humid. It's... it's... Yeah. And uh, and as far as um, as far as your uh, your expe expectations are mm. concerned, I mean, obviously the world waits with bated breath. You 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 become the leader of the free world right. in January. What are you going to do? Well, I think you're already seeing it. I think you're already seeing it with China. China's killing us in trade. They're absolutely killing us. I'm letting them. Know. I'm putting them on high alert. I'm putting them on high alert. You got the you whole know. of China? They're all of China. <laughs> all of China. I mean, China. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. Great Chinese food, by the way. Tremendous Chinese food. Great take out. But I have to tell you, what they're doing us in trade, uh, not going to happen. I'm talking to Taiwan right now. Yeah. OK. And, and, and what about... Because, I mean, congratulations. Obviously, you've just been awarded uh, Time Magazine's uh, Person of the Year Award. Person of the Year. But you know what's even more important? What People it... Magazine's Sexiest Man of the Year Award. I think oh, that's, that's even <laughs> more important. I think that's more... I'm more sexier than Hugh Jackman. That's very important. But it? we're looking at people that you've been... I mean, obviously, Hillary Clinton for mm -hmm. the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, Beyonce also. And our, and our own Nigel Farage beat him. I, I beat everybody. I beat absolutely... I'm tremendous. I'm the Person of the Year. And I think that's retroactive, so I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I'm going to be the person of the century. Can we, <laughs> um, are we allowed to strip back uh, the president-elect now and actually talk to John Domenico? You sure? <laughs> you John sure you D. Domenico, do would, you, would you mind awfully if, <laughs> just for a couple of minutes, because... Oh because it was gosh. lovely to talk to you um, <laughs> so by nice the satellite. You, oh, finally. it's incredible. I'd say this is so wild to actually be here after our three via I know. satellite. Yeah. So, I know. so yeah. all oh, your Christmases have come at once. <laughs> yes, it's really like the craziest thing that's ever happened. Because you, you've been doing impressions for a very long time. I've been doing impressions since I was five years old. I've been doing Trump for 12 years. Yeah. And so, and then suddenly for, for this to happen, um, you, when you watch that looming on the horizon, uh, you, you must have thought, I'm going to make a fortune. I, yeah, you know what it was? It was just more that I'm going to have steady work. You never know like what yeah. the incoming is going to be, but this past year has just been Crazy. Amazing. Well, things are really looking up, because sort of financial forecasts for you, Reggie Brown, who is the uh, impersonator for Obama, right. he is, it's, it's been reported that he's earned up to $28,000 for 35 minutes' work. Right. Right. Yeah, that's when at the height of the presidency. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and he does, and I, and I know Reggie, and Reggie's works all over the globe because uh, President Obama has is is beloved. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he works a lot in, you know, in the Netherlands and in Bangkok, Thailand and all these international places and also, of course, in the U.S. So let's hope that the love keeps going yeah. for Trump internationally. Well, this is why we've invited you on now, because right. after January, we can't afford you. You won't. You won't be able to afford me. I'm going to buy this building. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> I have to tell you. So what's the, what's the toughest thing to, to do to get for him, for, to, for the voice, yeah. or just the you know what at this point it, you know with him it's the constant you know there's so much nuance to the way he speaks. Mm. I have to tell you, you know what I mean? Because he's up, he's down, he constricts his vocal cords. You know the gesture. You know he's always moving, he's always gesticulating like this. By the way, this is how I work out. A lot of pointing, you know. <laughs> so he's not like a normal. If you're doing someone like you know, if I'm doing Austin Bowers, baby, it's kind of like a straight across kind of thing. With Trump, it's a constant. You have to figure out 
what are the rules of the way he speaks? Yeah. And that's, and they, he doesn't really follow any rules, specifically. Um, oh, in life, either, as it No, does. no, exactly. <laughs> you've, um, you've had to sort of increase security, though, whenever you go and do performances now, because sometimes it has gone a little bit wrong. Right, when, since he's, you know, on the run-up, I think, I think a lot of people didn't think he was going to win. It was kind of like a fun thing. Oh, yeah, this guy's running. When we were in New York the Saturday before the election, I did three uh, full, full interviews with... Um, uh, Japanese TV, British television, and a couple of uh, Australian TV, and we spent the entire day in mm. in Times Square. And I was starting to notice for the very first time a, there was a little bit of negativity. Yeah. And uh, we were noticing people were coming in, trying to get in my face, so we had the crews kind of block it out. And then post the election, when I did my first on the street kind of stuff, we had to have two real bodyguards. Well, you've got to hope, wow. I suppose, that when he becomes president, that you know, things are OK and that people can still see the humour in right. President Trump. Right. Because yeah. your life depends on that. Yes, get him at this point. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, he's so ripe to be uh, parodied. And I always try to be very respectful. I'm not really a hard, I'm not hardcore. I mm. try to just keep it funny as, as you know, in, as much as yeah. possible. Well, it's well, a look, pleasure to meet thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, oh, so thank you. Thank you for Go having me. Go and have a nice Christmas. I hope you've got some time off. And uh, No, yeah. actually, I'm flying right back to the States and I have a show tomorrow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, well. Thanks for watching. Click here for more This Morning videos.